Hello, and thank you for praying with us. On this feast of Corpus Christi, we celebrate the great gift of the Eucharist. We remember that we are part of a family and that wherever we are, God unites us together. It's time to sign up to get your picture taken for our new parish pictorial directory. Though electronic signups are not available on the weekends, you can sign up during the weekday, and we do hope you will get your picture taken. You can read about that in the bulletin, as well as about our youth group summer schedule and much more. We now have a word from Linda Bergman about our growing project, and then a word from Father Joe. Hello, I'm Linda Bergman, a fellow parishioner at Most Sacred Heart. Fifteen years ago, I went to Peru to hike the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. While there, I was moved by the indigenous children and families I saw living in extreme poverty. I literally felt a calling from God to help them. So I founded a nonprofit charity called Kindness in a Box. The mission of Kindness in a Box is to provide humanitarian resources for the education, health, and well-being of the indigenous Quechua children and families. Among many things, it has provided basic health care needs and nutritional education to combat anemia and malnutrition, lunches for the village schools and educational supplies, and medical supplies for the village hospital. We're excited that this year our growing project will be partnering with Kindness in a Box. The donations you generously give, along with the revenue from the sale of the hay bales from our field, will provide for seed and fertilizer for soybean acreage on Jim Haney's farm here in Eureka. When the soybeans are harvested and sold, the proceeds will be donated to Kindness in a Box. There's no administrative overhead costs with this project. Every dollar of your donation goes to the Quechua people in these villages in Peru. Donations can be made by writing a check to Most Sacred Heart and putting Growing Project in the memo line or through the We Share link in our parish website. There are envelopes in the back of church by the bulletins you can use if you'd like. If you know of any other farmers that would be interested in learning about the project, pre please contact the parish office. We ask you to pray for the success of our project as we bless our hayfield this weekend. Thank you for helping Most Sacred Heart to carry out its mission. Loved by God, we love this world. Thanks, Linda. The, the Growing Project is such a wonderful expression of who we are as a parish, and I'm, I'm excited that we're teaming up with Kindness in a Box to help the folks in Peru who are struggling and who are hungry. And it leads perfectly into the fact that this week we celebrate our parish feast day. Now, as everyone knows, the Feast of the Sacred Heart falls on the Friday after the second Sunday after Pentecost, which is always the seventh Sunday after Easter, which is held on the first Sunday after the first full moon occurring on or after the vernal equinox. <laughs> but you knew that. In any case, our feast, Parish Feast Day, this year is on Friday. Several simple things. First, on Thursday, the night before our feast day, you were invited to a presentation here and live streamed by Virginia Herbers called Sacred Heart Devotion, A New Look. Secondly, if your schedule allows, you're invited to join us online or in person for our regularly scheduled 7.30 Mass that morning, which will provide a chance to pray the Eucharist together on our feast day. Thirdly, we will have Eucharistic adoration available on Friday from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Please sign up to make sure that we always have somebody in church the entire time. And fourthly, in the email blast and on our parish webpage is a link to an online tour of our church given by our own parishioner, Mike O'Connor one of the artists who 
help create this beautiful worship space. There is more information about all of that in this week's bulletin and online. Now, personally, I consider myself greatly blessed to be at most sacred heart at the same time that so many of you are right now, right? And hope that this is the parish from which I get to retire, and we'll see. In any case, may God bless this parish. May God bless this precious time we have here together. And may God help us make a difference by how we live. Loved by God, we do love this world. On behalf of Father Leo, in my own name, on behalf of our whole staff, happy feast day. As we begin our prayer now, if no one is near you, please know that we are with you in spirit. If anyone is near you, please offer them a sign of your love. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. On this feast we celebrate the body and blood of Christ, the very gift of the Eucharist. Our gospel question, how many good reasons do you know not to pray Sunday Mass? What are some good reasons not to pray Sunday Mass. Lord Jesus, on the night before you died, you gathered with your disciples and washed their feet. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You gave us the Eucharist. And the command to love as you did. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You promised to be with us always. You are with us now. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and to sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in two large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. He then took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all the words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Today we have a reading 
from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said to his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. During the peak of the pandemic, some of you told me stories of your attempts to pray and watch Mass online at home with your children. Oh, bless your heart. Now, when churches were about to reopen, one mom said, not saying this happened at our house, of course, but when we come back to in-person Masses, would it be frowned upon if, out of habit, in the middle of Mass, I accidentally shouted, would everyone just shut up? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Now, meanwhile, many, uh, many pastors, many priests wondered if people even would come back. You know, Mass Online was so different. Would the pandemic make people miss coming to Mass and did not take it far? Granted, so much, you know, would there be an, an influx when the churches were fully open? Or might the opposite be true? Perhaps a number of those who came fairly regularly would get used to not coming and might not come back. Would most churches have more or less people than they used to have? Of course, even before the pandemic, I heard many reasons people had not to pray Sunday Mass. Perhaps you've heard some of them. Perhaps you've felt some of them. You know, things like, it's boring. There's too much repetition. I get more of being outside in nature. I'm too busy. I disagree too much with the church and the direction the church has been taking. I don't feel like it on a giving morning. Now, I would argue that there are reasons not to pray Sunday Mass, even without a pandemic and for folks who could easily do so. There are some reasons not to pray Sunday Mass with us. But before I give those, let me first address why I think the arguments I just mentioned don't hold up for me or for you. One, there are lots of boring things we do that are important. Two, repetition has a place. Or else, for example, I would have never been of any benefit to any soccer team I ever played for. There is a lot of repetition in the drills I did. There are some non-negotiables in life, and this seems to be one. 
There will never be a time when I won't be busy. I've, I've never had a boss, a family member, or a friend with whom I always agree. Have you? And six, there are days for me, as for each person, I would think, when I don't feel like doing what is important to do right then. It's still important. Now, having said all that, let me give you some reasons not to go to Mass. There are more. Here are four. First, I suggest that you or I should not go to Mass if, one, we think the world is all about us. You know, it is possible for any of us to think, start to think that we are the center of the universe. I don't need community. Who needs to come together with strangers? I'll do it my own way, and then I don't have to deal with people who think differently, vote differently, pray differently, act differently, whatever. Plus, you know, everybody else has got so many needs, it's just wow, annoying, if not inconvenient. Anyway, my time is my own. I deserve every hour of the day for myself. No, don't pray Mass if you think the world is all about you. Because Mass is about knowing time is an unmerited and undeserved gift. And to give the first fruits of the hours of the new week is a way of saying thanks. And doing so changes us. And community is the best way to make a difference. And gathering with strangers in shared faith is a taste of heaven. Two, the second reason not to come to Mass. You or I should not come to Mass if we are not hungry or thirsty. We should not pray Mass online if we're not hungry or thirsty. You know, if we don't have any desire for meaning, for mystery, for something more than what meets the eye, if you or I don't ever feel that there is something in us are in our lives that is broken. You know, in today's gospel, Jesus himself gathers with his disciples for the Sabbath meal because they knew they needed it. This is not a reward for the righteous. This is a meal for sinners, a home for the broken, a place for seekers. This is for people who are open to the possibility that there is more than what is right in front of them all the time place to touch the divine. And if we are not hungry to be healed, if we don't long for a presence bigger than the chattering of our own thoughts, no, we shouldn't do this. Three, we shouldn't pray Mass if we know what is best all the time. If you or I are Becoming arrogant or self-righteous, we shouldn't pray Mass. If we have no need for a greater truth, don't want to listen to anyone who disagrees with us, and don't want to stand under any authority other than our own opinions or our own wills because, well, we really know what is best for everyone, we ought to stay away from Mass. For this is one of the places we can listen to something bigger than ourselves, right? At Mass, the wisdom of the book is told. The wisdom of a hundred generations of seekers is shared. And here Jesus said, do this in memory of me. As often as you do this, I am present to lead and guide and feed and comfort and strengthen you. For over 2,000 years now, his followers have taken that seriously and met him at Mass. If I think I am the exception to the rule, because I know what's best all the time, it's probably best not to pray Mass. And number four, we shouldn't pray Mass if we see no value in sacrifice or in service to the world. You see, 
This Mass is intrinsically tied to what Jesus did the night before he died, when he got up from the table and washed the feet of that little band of misfits. Then he would freely and painfully make his way to be betrayed and to Calvary, where he would accept cruelty and a shameful, painful death for others. And each Mass we hear, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. And this sentence, do this in memory of me, clearly applies to that meal, right, to the meal, but also to the washing of the feet into a willingness to be poured out for others as he was. As his followers, we are to do that in memory of him. So, who knows how mass attendance will change as the guidance and the dispensations continue to evolve it's still too early, I think, to know whether or not in the end the pandemic will have led us to greater mass attendance or lesser. Either way, I say all these, these things not to be an apologist for the church. I say them to remind myself and because I love you and I want you to have the best life you can have. Because this stuff is at the heart of what it means to be a person, a human person. The stuff of which real human beings are made. I want that for me. I want that for you. In the unseen presence of God with us now and always, we profess faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And trusting that God hears us whenever we call out, we offer some of our intercessions now. We pray for the grace to treasure the gift of Sunday Mass. May we stay connected to Christ and through our prayer learn to live and love as Jesus did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we approach the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we pray for this parish and for each member. May God's compassion and goodness be known in our every gathering and in all that we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask God to bless the meals we share in our homes. We ask God to bless the meal we share called Eucharist. May we, who are so privileged to pray the Eucharist, be transformed by what we celebrate we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our efforts for the growing project will help provide a sustainable food source for those who go hungry in Peru. We ask God to bless this important work 
in all of our efforts to love this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As we start to emerge from the pandemic, there are many who are struggling. We pray in a special way for the mental health of all young people who are hurting right now, for all who are in pain or turmoil. May God's healing peace flow in abundance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We take just a moment of quiet for any other prayers that are in our hearts these days. Oh God, we trust that you do hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken. Help us to hear you. We pray in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Precious body, precious blood, seen as red and the Lord prepares the feast Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is full. Come share the Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and the glory of his name, name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect sacrifice. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take 
this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Archbishop, but all the bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers, sisters, relatives, friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. those we see and with those we can't, with God's people all over the world and those who've gone before us in death, and even with that little group of disciples gathered around the table with Jesus on the night before he died, we together pray as he taught us. Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer some sign of Christ's peace. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but always say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My My Jesus, I believe believe you are really present in the blessed sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul, at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for praying with us, really. And thanks for sharing the links to the homily or mass with anyone you, you think might benefit. I am particularly excited about our growing project efforts where we use the hay from our own fields and twin with local farmers and work with kindness in a box to really help save people's lives, really. It's, it's just our call. And for all those who are part of this parish family, May this week when we celebrate our parish feast day be particularly blessed and deepen the best in us. And for all who joined us from anywhere, pray for us that we might live our call. Loved by God, we love this world. Boys and girls, let's see what Big Al's thinking about. I actually got a question for him. Well, how are you, buddy? Good. Well, come on out. No. Oh, it's boring. It's boring. Well, Big Al, it's still important. Why? Well, Big Al, you know what? You probably forgot this. But once you help me write a prayer, take a listen, oh, buddy. It's called Sunday is a special day. Oh, yeah. It goes like this. Sunday is a special day. To stop, to love, to pray. You call us to the mass, dear God. The best part of our day. It's still boring. Well, some things that are really important aren't always fun. But listen up, listen up. You say, please come to this great meal. It's wonderful and new. Because I love you very much, I've made a place for you. Whoa. But first, God, we must choose to go and leave some things behind. That is sometimes hard to do. It is. Yep. But this is what we'll find. So here's what we find. When we go to give you thanks for blessings old and new, we will find amazing love. Because there we can meet you. Whoa. Thank you, God, for giving us the mass to 
help us pray. What a gift you have for us on this special day. No right. Come on out. Yeah, Big L, thanks for coming out. I know it's sometimes kind of hard to want to, you know, either watch Mass on TV or come all the way up here. But in the end, it's worth it. It's worth it. Ah, I agree. Because God does something in here, and we together make a difference for others. Yay! Yes, you may say that. Go, Cardinal! Thanks, boys and girls, for praying. Thank you. It makes a bigger difference than you would know, not just for you, but for me and for all of us, that you would pray with us. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Father Lee, would you be so kind as to give us a blessing? Thanks, Father Joe. And Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, and of living in our lives, bless our parish on this week of our feast day. May we truly be a sacred heart, the heart of your Son. Fill us with your blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.